this one and weary land where many a dream has died. Like a tree planted by the water, we never will run dry. So living water flowing through, God, we thirst for more of you. Fill our hearts and flood our souls with one desire. Just to know you and to make you known, we lift your name on high. Shine like the sun, make darkness run and hide. Come on. We know we were made for so much more than ordinary lives. It's time for us to more than just survive. We were made to thrive. Oh, 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 Until the world we're reaching out to show them who you are. So living, so living water flowing through. God, we thirst for more of you. Fill our hearts and flood our souls with one desire. Just to know you and to make you known. We Lift your name on high, shine like the sun, make darkness run and hide. We know we were made for so much more than ordinary lives. It's time for us to more than just survive. We Joy unspeakable, faith unsinkable, love unstoppable, anything is possible. Joy unspeakable, faith unsinkable, love unstoppable, anything is possible. Joy unspeakable, faith unsinkable, love unstoppable, anything is possible. Joy unspeakable. Faith unsinkable, love unstoppable, anything is possible. Just to know you and to make you know we lift your name on high. Shine like the sun, make darkness run and hide. Survive. Oh, we were made to thrive. Lord, we thank you this morning. We were made to thrive. Lord, we step up in faith and we thrive. Thank you for your kingdom that's unchanging. Thank you for your word that's sure and true and your spirit that constantly leads. We love you this morning. Thank you, Lord, in advance for what you're doing in each one of our hearts. Lord, you have deposits. You have encounters and impartations for each one this morning. Those that are in this room, those that are tuning in online, and Lord, we receive it this morning in faith. In Jesus' name. And everyone that believes said, Amen. Amen. Turn around and greet someone. Tell them good morning. Tell them how wonderful they look. Introduce yourself if you don't know them.
Thank you, Jesus. First things first this morning, people are still rolling in. Greet those that are online. Good to have you. We have a bunch that tune in. And also we have some, and a lot of the congregation may not know this, we have some that tune in. They, they work on Sundays, but so they tune in later. And one of them is Allison Keeney from Montana. So it's good to see you this week, Allison. So I just want to make sure we put that on there to let you know that we know you're watching. So we love you. And you guys could actually fill out a little card there if this is your very first time. Look on there. It'll show you. Click on it. Fill out a visitor card. We'd love to have that recorded. Also, if this is your very first time here, right, we have a little visitor card we'd like for you to fill out here in the house. So if that's you, would you raise your hand? Very first time? Very first time? My friend back there. Good to see you this morning. Hey, all the way in the back, Connie. There's actually two handsome guys sitting there, but give it, give it to the younger handsome guy. Good to have you this morning, man. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited, guys, of what's going on all over the planet. You know, uh, I don't know, there's just a, a, a shaking happening everywhere. And you can see some things in the natural shaking, but the Lord made a promise. He said, everything that can shake will shake. Now, as the church, you don't have to be afraid of that. Because the one that's shaking is like on your team. Or, no, no, you're on his team. Amen? So how many know that uh, Easter's coming? Good to see you, Charlie. Good to see you, Lisa. And with that, how many know that we every year we do an Easter egg hunt? And every year inside the eggs is what? Yeah. How many know if we had a bunch of eggs, we put them out there with no candy, we may have a revolt? So we went ahead, all our eggs are in. We ordered a bunch more eggs. And uh, you're going to hear more information coming later. We're going to have, usually it's after a Wednesday night service. We, we announce that and people will come. And then afterwards we have a stuffing party. And man, we get a lot of eggs done. Can't we, Pastor Dave? Get a lot done at one time. So anyway, but we're looking, please bring individually wrapped candy that would fit in an Easter egg. And the reason I say that, because one year somebody brought a bunch of uh, suckers, dum-dums. How many know unless you put a hole in the egg, the dum-dum, you know, it's not going to fit. But any individually wrapped candy, that's something that if everybody kind of grabs a bag, and does that, that is a great blessing to us. You know, and, and do this for me too. When you, when you buy your candy, lay hands on the bag and pray over it. I think, you know, if the anointing could go into cloth, it could go into candy. Can you imagine some kid putting a candy in his mouth going, whoo, I feel God. Mom. I believe that could happen. Amen. So pray over your candy. Don't just buy it. When you bring it, pray over it. Also, uh, tonight, they're, tonight over at Hosanna, we've combined with them, and we're doing what we call a We Will Worship Night. Youth are invited to that. I know that Jordan sent out a message this morning to a lot of them. It's uh, really at Hosanna Christian Fellowship. Look in your bulletin. You'll see the address on there. Plug that into your GPS. It's it's really off of uh, Barger in West Eugene. And we're going to have a great time over there. Pastor Frank Castanet's a friend of mine. And a uh, great heart for worship. Great heart for the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of things we believe together on stuff. Right? So, man, if you want a time of worship tonight, time of the Holy Spirit, uh, he, him and his team really create that atmosphere. Now, I know Jordan, I think some of, some of our team, I think, is combining with them. Is that right, Shannon? So it's going to be good. It's going to be a really good time. So the time on that, uh, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, if you come at 5 p.m., let's say that you have to be out because of school or whatever earlier. Hey, if you're done before we're done, no condemnation, right? But just come check us out this, this evening. We're combined. And how many know that the Lord loves unity? And there's unity in this. Unity in this. We're combining with them. Really got to know Pastor Frank and some of the pastors conferences at Cannon Beach. We were roommates, I think, a couple times. And I just so appreciate him. So that's coming up. Also, I'm going I'm to have my wife come. I see a baby shower coming. Woo! There's a baby shower coming. I'm so excited. Miss Catherine, there she is right there. She's going to have a sweet baby. And you know what? We uh, neglected to announce this a little bit earlier. So we want to get the word out, all the ladies. Uh, is this a combined co-ed or is this Women. Pardon? 
It's women's shower. So it will be up here in the sanctuary this next Saturday. And it begins, uh, I got my glasses so I could see this. It begins at 2 o'clock right up here. And she is registered uh, at Target.com and Amazon.com. Um, sometimes I go into Target to get registries and they don't work. So just if you look it up online, you can kind of see what she likes there, kind of her taste. What is the main theme for the nursery for the for a little girl? What are the colors in the main theme? Mauvish pink and gray. Is that what you said? Oh, a neutral rainbow. Okay, cool. So it's a it's a mauvish color and a neutral looking rainbow. No, now we are having a lot of different babies coming, and I'm so excited for this little one. And her name is, is have you decided? Is it Macy? Her name is Macy, okay? And she's going to be so loved by those brothers, okay? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. We, we have a situation like that in our family right now. Our four grandsons just had a sister. Yeah. And wow. They adore her. You have to have them be careful because they want to mob up on her and kiss her and stuff all at once. And she's like going like this. No, no, she likes it. She smiles. We have a picture, a movie of her doing it, and she's all happy and excited that they're there kissing on her. Um, but anyway, we're excited for Catherine and Jonathan. What a blessing. Oh, my goodness. Heaven came down and kissed you with a little girl, huh, Jonathan? So this is exciting. We want to gather around her and celebrate her. Two o'clock this next Saturday. And is it a potluck? Don't think so. We, this kind of fell through the cracks because we had a, a couple people who aren't in our church who are, or, well, one that's not in our church. She's mainstreaming this, and, and she's not here to announce it, Okay. She goes to a different church up in another town, okay? So anyway, we love her, and we want to come around to her. So everybody know what time is it going to be on Saturday this next week? Two o'clock. Also, while I'm up here, I want to announce that I will be contacting some of the different women at the church, or you can come and talk to me after service. Uh, the guys are doing the uh, cleaning day this next, what, it's the 8th, the, the 9th? So, but bef before then, we're going to have a list of things indoors that we're going to get done. Now, we're going to hire somebody to do the windows, right? Pastor Kelly's not happy about the upper windows. So, this is the thing, is we're going to get those windows done, okay? And uh, we have so, so very much inside of the sanctuary and downstairs to accomplish. And us ladies are a good workforce. We can get her done, okay? We got some chores, some painting, some cleaning, some, you know, uh, I, I just was... We can actually clean walls, wipe them down, clean baseboards by washing the baseboards down, and uh, just do a really intensive clean on the church, okay? And that's what, hi, that's what, I didn't know you were here today, and that's what we want to do. So, uh, if you'd like to be part of that, come see me, otherwise I will also be calling people and saying, hey, come jump on board, we need some help, so. We have an announcement we'd like some a, a couple in the church to make. So I'm going to have Gregory and Kira come up here. They're not going to the moon, okay? They're not going to the moon. They're not going to space. But they just shared something with us this week, and I just said, hey, I want you guys to share. Well, we found out Monday that we're having a baby. She is seven weeks along yesterday. Yes. I've been feeling good. Yeah. I haven't really had any, so yeah, I've been very blessed. What some people will do to get on the baby team. You saw? Now they're on the baby team. Hey Amen. Congratulations, guys. That's awesome. That's awesome. We just want you guys to know from them. That's five. That's their number five on the way. So, but we expect Unless some of you are out there are not telling us. So, yeah. <laughs> Jerry, he's pointing over at Julia right now. 
<laughs> I don't think she's believing God for that. Is this right, Julie? Okay, just making sure. Yeah, amen. Oh, right. glory to God. Yeah, so just, you know, God's good. He's bring, bringing the babies. So keep them in prayer. That's why I wanted to just talk a little bit more. Keep those babies, their yeah. health, their families, their finances, their health, their joy, their peace in prayer. Because you know what? Sometimes the enemy tries to come in and, and unsettle everybody, make them, you know, full of, of you know, just disorder or, or disharmony. So we stand against that and we release peace to all the babies, all the mamas and daddies and all, all the families. And um, I'm excited. Amen, amen, amen. Excited for you guys. Also, that work day we mentioned is coming up on the 9th. Uh, can, they, can they sign up online for that? Please, Carol, do you know? Or in the lobby. And uh, Ryan shared with me, he said, hey, Pastor, I have a pressure washer. Do you need one? Yes. Because, hey, listen, we'll turn you loose with some pressure washing jobs. I know Charlie did a great job out here on the sheds before. And I don't know if you can come or not, but if you can bring your pressure washer, we'll take that too. Because how many know the more pressure washers you have that you reduce the job down to? Yeah. Yeah. Come on up here, Pastor Patrick. Talk about two things. Talk about this work day, but also talk about uh, the uh, Live, Love, Laugh, His and Hers conference coming up with uh, Dr. Molina. Hallelujah. So, Megama, kind of start too, remember? Okay. <laughs> That's not speaking in tongues, that's Gaelic for all you non-Irish. Okay, so enough said. Um, first, yes, we do need you men to, and women to come and participate in on the night. Uh, we will be serving breakfast. Um, the Hadleys have volunteered to spearhead that. And uh, whatever... Okay, so whatever hand tools or whatever that you bring, make sure you put some kind of a marking on them because before we've cross-pollinated and people's feelings get hurt when their stuff leaves when they brought it here to, for everybody to use. So make sure that it's well marked. Okay, spray paint, duct tape, I don't care. Yeah, something so that we, we're, we're not in trouble, okay? We don't know what to expect. Right, and so... and. Yeah, yeah, we'll give it away. Because you know what it means? A shovel means work. You know what I mean? <laughs> Nobody steals the shovels out of the back of my truck, ever. <laughs> I don't have to worry about that stuff. Nobody's going to steal work. So, And, all right, so enough said with that. Please, all right, I'm going to start calling. I know you can sign up, but I'm going to start calling and touching. And I see one brother back there that I haven't seen in a while, Michael. And I would like for you to, uh, you know, come and fellowship with us yeah amen, amen 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 so uh this is coming up it's another be bold for christ uh with uh pastor molina and his team and uh we have these uh hand or flyers they're out on the table out there and uh i brought mine just to show you we lead by example pastor brian showed you his last week yeah. this is mine and my wife's we are registered to go amen if I'm going to be there, you guys be there. And uh, Did you use the QR code? My wife did it. Yeah. I, yeah. Let me just say it, okay? That QR code, they have it really simple. Super, super simple. You put your phone on there and bam, and it'll poof, take you right where you need to go. So I, I'm looking forward to this. This is a, it's going to be a little different uh, for your security team. You guys did an excellent job. They want us back, but we said, hey, my pastor said, nope, we got to sit in the audience this time. So... Uh, I want you all to show, but just be prepared if there is something. Hey, we'll handle it. But we're not going to be walking around the perimeter. We're not going to be doing. So, Ryan, you're going to be in there. And I already gave you one of these, yes? It's for, so I'm going to personally hand this to you so that that way you know. Bring your wife. No, no, I know, but I already had it, Ryan. Uh, but I have it. And I gave you one? Anyway, I'm just, I, I'm doing a commercial. So, <laughs> these guys, they know, they know that they, they need to strengthen their marriages. Just, that's, 
that's the thing. It's not about us. It's about, it's not about me. It's about us, you know. So I'm taking my wife, and uh, Pastor Brian's taking his Mrs. Pastor. <laughs> and so, um, just I just want to encourage you guys to be be cognizant of, of your other half, you know. And, and I'm I'm speaking to myself when I'm saying this because a lot of times I, I take her for granted. Like when he said, oh, did you do the QR, QR codes? No, my wife did it for me. But I should know how to do this, amen? I shouldn't rely on her to do that. But I do rely on her for a lot of stuff. And we do as men rely on our wives for a lot of things. And uh, it's just time for us to step up. Amen. amen. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Pastor Patrick. Good deal. Also, guys, one last announcement. We have, a, you know, Jordan, Pastor Jordan's finishing up the Explore Nations course that we've been doing just on doctrine and we have a brand new course coming up not this Tuesday but the next Tuesday and again th th we do a lot of classes we we do quite a few of them all the way through the year we have a Bible school it's called Explore Nations you see it there in the bulletin but this next class that's going to be starting we decided to those that want to come check us out right you can come the first two Tuesday nights just for free right but this next one's going to be on grace we're going over Pastor uh, Tony Cook's book, Grace, the DNA of God. Very, very good class. So, listen, if you've never come to a class like that before, it's on Tuesday nights, 6.30 to 9.30, right? We have breaks in there, but it's just a really, really good class to get grounded in grace. Amen. Amen. That's so awesome. Hey, I just, because I get here a little bit late, I just wanted to uh, note you know, how many of you help around the church? You do things. You know, you work, you clean. I mean, so many of you. We've got so, so many good workers at this church. Oh, my goodness. You guys are exemplary, okay? But also, we want to give thanks where thanks is due and honor where honors due. And I just wanted to have you guys see outdoors at the lawn, okay, and up here on the hill. Steve Bragg has been doing our yard for us recently. And we just want to give him a thanks for helping us look good. So, I know Steve well enough. He's he just points to Jesus, and he'd rather be invisible. I know him. He would. He would. But guys, also you look up here. We left this up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We had our uh, breakaway bold conference for our youth. Incredible, incredible time. We had twenty five. Is that right? 25 teenagers here. Was it 23? Teenagers here. And you know, one, one girl headed home a couple times during the night. But just really, really good time with them. That's why we left this up. Got all our t-shirts on. Here's the front, right? There's the back. Proverbs 28.1. The wicked man flees when no end pursues, but the righteous is what? Bold as a lion. You know, so we're handing these out to all our youth that were there, all our workers that were there. Uh, check in. If you want to buy one, you can after we get them all dispersed. I don't know if, what we're going to have left over. But we're purposely doing, Jose designed this shirt. Jose, stand up, Jose. Right there. His talents are getting better and better and better. And what we're doing for the, even for the event shirts we're not no longer putting the name of the event on there, and we're not putting dates on there, just so we can just use the shirts for anybody, anywhere, anytime. Amen? How many got your Bibles? Oh, questions? Question, Tony? Or testimony? To all of you, I know have been praying for our son, James. Well, just this morning, as I was pulling in the parking lot, my wife texted me. She's at the hospital with James and Corvallis. And they're letting him come home today. So, praise the Lord. I mean, we thank all of you so much for all your prayers. And it's just a miracle. This right there it shows what God does, you know. And he's. Okay. Did the doctors ever find out what was making the blood levels drop? They really don't know. But. Okay. So we're going to pray then. Okay. Father, we just lift James up to you, Lord God. You know, God, you know what's going on in his body. And we ask in the name of Jesus that 
Well, first of all, we go to you, Satan, command you to take your hands off James in Jesus' name. We command you to cease your maneuver set against his physical body and mind in Jesus' name. Go! Leave! In Jesus' name. Jesus is the triumphant one. And at the name of Jesus, every knee, every knee, even low blood count, must bow. Every tongue confess Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Father, we release your healing power. We ask that his blood levels would come back up. His, his marrow and his bones would function uh, properly to grow and to, and to cause the blood to come forth. Just everything, God, you know what's going on. We ask you to fix it. We ask you to continue to cause him to be healthy and strong. His blood levels to come up and not ever go back down in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thanks for the report. Guys, also, I was going to have some testimonies just from some of the youth that were at this bold conference. But get this. Most, most of all our youth I asked, they're downstairs working right now. Isn't that great? They are engaged. They, this is their church. They're engaged, working, and doing. Amen? Amen. You got your Bibles, open them to Proverbs chapter 2. Jose, you can pull the verses up I gave you there. We've been talking about wisdom. How many know that wisdom... Goes with finances. You know, if you need a, if you need an envelope for your giving, if you're if you're going to be giving in to either the back box or up here this morning, you need an envelope. Raise up your hand if you're doing it that way. Otherwise, we have different ways. We're going to pull it up so you guys can give online, different things. But I wanted to kind of get that out first. Okay, you got that for me, Jose? Oh, not that. The verse. Sorry. Didn't mean to be confusing. There you go. We've been talking about wisdom just in the second chapter of Proverbs. And as you go down, there's so many good things. And it's just showing you all that wisdom will do. And it continues right here. Right? It says, it, wisdom, will rescue you from evil in disguise. Anybody ever met that? Evil in disguise? <laughs> there's a lot of it happening right now. Everywhere. Evil, it'll rescue you from evil in disguise and from those who speak what? Is there any of that going on right now? It's happening. It's happening. It's happening in the area of business. It's happening in the area of politics. It's happening. Listen, I'd hate to, I hate to say this, but it's happening in the ways of the word of God. There's duplicities being spoken right now. But yet the Lord says, if you're double-minded, you're not receiving anything from God. But then I'll hear preachers get up and preach duplicity on the word of God. It's like, no, 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 no. That's not how it works, amen? People need to be settled on what God said. Next verse. It says, for they have left the highway of holiness. Talking about people that, you know, in disguise, or those that speak duplicities. They have left the highway of holiness. Does that kind of imply that maybe they were on the highway at one time? It does. And they walk in the ways of what? Darkness. See, one of the reasons it says in Hebrews chapter 10 it says, forsake not the gathering of thyself together. Even more so as you day, see the day approaching. It says, look in ways that you can motivate one another in the love of God and in the ways of God. Because any time, and it's happened here in the last couple of years, any time anyone, anyone gets isolated, it's not good. It's not good. I was talking about how uh, there's one county in America, I was reading an article, there's one county in America that the suicide rate rate for teenagers was higher than the COVID death rate. Because what happened is people, Jesus calls us sheep. Sheep are in herds, right? We need to be together. See, part of that one another and together verses that the Bible talks about, man, we need to be speaking into one another's life. Some of you may say, man, Lord, I, I really want a word uh, today for someone. Sometimes just a smile and man, it's so good to see you. That is a word. You're putting life into them. Amen. It says, they take pleasure when what? <laughs> Evil prospers and thoroughly enjoy a what? Wow. Lifestyle of sin. It says, but they're walking on a path to what? To nowhere. You know, nobody chooses that path. Oh, what does that sign say? Nowhere. Well, I'm going to go down that path. No, nobody does that. It's deception. It's deception. You know, in Oregon, there's a lot of different paths that go a lot of different ways. And, you know, if you, if you saw a path that says, this is the jumping off place. Everyone on this path dies. They go over a cliff. I wouldn't go on that path. But that's exactly what's happening. 
what it says here, they're on a path to nowhere, wandering away into what? Deeper deception. Deeper deception. See, in the area of finance, God wants to lead us and guide us with the awareness that there's a lot of, a lot of things out there that just we shouldn't be involved with. And God will show you. God will show you. He'll show you which ones to be involved with, which ones not to be involved with. See, but yet, how many know he's raising up things right now that could be financial money makers in a lot of ways, right? Sometimes it's like, Lord, I, I need money. And they said, man, Pastor, I've been praying for money, but all I've been getting is these great ideas to produce something. Well, that's God speaking, amen? Was that the last one, Jose? Was there another one? That was it. So, as we're as we're asking the Lord about our personal finance, Kelly and I, and you know, individuals or couples out there, God wants to be involved with you. I believe this even more so, even more so than ever. Because I said we're knocking on eight billion people right now in the world, right? When you're talking, it matters what site you're on, but you, you know, there's a lot talking over three billion have never heard about Christ ever. Well. I mean, there's got to be a change in the plan. There's got to be a shift in the resources. Something's got to happen, right? So when you know that, be looking for it. And don't have this attitude. Well, you know, that's for somebody else. No, that's for you. If you know what to do with it, God can get it to you. The, you know, the, the, the hose that carries water to the house is always wet. It's the way it works. God wants to do that for you. But in the midst of that, there's ones out there trying to. Get your money. Amen. I had a lady call me one time. You know a sales call? How many How many get sales calls? Right? Yeah. Do they know when you eat at night? You know what I mean? How that works? I'm talking to this lady. I'm, I'm really trying to be nice. And I says, ma'am, I'm just not interested. And, and she says, well, listen, this is something really, really good. you got to trust me. I said, ma'am, I don't trust you. And she goes, what? She's offended, right? I said, I don't know you. <laughs> When somebody that I don't even know says, you really need to trust me. Ah, that makes me not trust you. Right? But that's happening out there. All over, but wisdom will begin to shine the light on things. Amen? Amen? Get your offering in your hand. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning. And Lord, we believe you that in this last day, in these final days, that you have shifting things that you spoke of in your word. You said the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. You said it would make it in to our hands. And we thank you for that, Father. And we ask you in the name of Jesus, and I, I pray you'd put it in the heart of everyone watching, online or in this room, to believe for that, God. Because you want to do great things. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, yeah. Where is Lisa Carroll? Lisa Carroll? Come on up here, Lisa Carroll. We were going to do this last week, but we couldn't. But we have some changes coming, don't we, Lisa Carol? Yes, Amen. Okay. Also, uh, go ahead and receive the offering, if you would, just by the buckets. And then pull that up on, on the screen, Jose. There you go. You that are online, even you that are here, if that's the way you give, there it is. All right. Um, just a quick announcement. We do have a little video I'm going to show you here in, in just a second. We need to make some changes um, on the administrative side of things. We're using a bunch of duplicated software for our, our giving system, our database um, tracking for addresses and such, for our kids' church, for online. We actually have about four different systems that we use. They do not collaborate. No, they do not. So we need to bring everything together to one software service, and it has a mobile app called Church Center. And we're going to see a video about that now.
So for those of you who are mobile phone fr friendly, I'm going to be speaking to you right here, right now. And then after service, I'm going to be at the back and I'm going to have a little card for you. Um, could we bring up the PowerPoint, please, sir? So the purpose of this software, again, have one database. All of our information, our addresses and that sort of stuff needs to go in there because we'll also be having people, when you um, sign up for registration, good, thank you, uh, when you give online, when you check in your kids, once we enter, enter the information in one spot, ooh, it's integrated, I love this. I know, right? Okay, so giving, all of your information comes together. And in this mobile app, okay, little QR code in the, in the, on the card that I'm going to give you, on that QR, uh, or in the giving app, in the, in the mobile app, you'll be able to identify your giving. There'll be a history of that. You'll be able to check your kids in, register for events. Next slide, please. <laughs> Just a slide, please. Thank you. So what does this mean to you? Well, you can do nothing. You do not have to do one thing. If you don't do one thing, I will be after you. <laughs> All right. I need to make sure that in, your, in our database, your information is correct. So if you're not mobile phone friendly, don't freak. Come see any one of us that has a little lanyard, lanyard and a little card on us. All right. We'll, we will be available for and after service in the lobby to uh, make sure that your information is updated. If you are mobile friendly, we'll have a card. Please scan it, update your information, make sure that everything is current, and then make sure that your household is, is um, all joined together in, in our database. Next. Um, next slide, please. So this month, we're making the announcements, all right? Everybody understands that we're integrating our software, right? Everybody understands that if you have a mobile phone, the app is free. You download it. You update it. Bada bing, bada boom. Next month, we start using it. There's going to be new ways for us to give. If you didn't realize that we're actually already using it for our kids' church. Uh, are we doing check-ins yet? Okay, we're doing... Um, all of our events are um, you're currently using that mobile app or, or the, the the planning app already, and um, so next month we begin using all of the tools for all of our processes. In the month of May, we will begin retiring some old tools. So there's a bit of a transition time, and I'm asking you, please be patient with us. All right. There's a little bit of of crossover. There's a lot of work on the back end to make sure that everything ticks and ties. One of the things I will be asking you to do is go back and check your, that your, your giving record looks right. Make sure that we did that integration. That's really important for those of us who um, uh, itemize on our taxes. And it's just important in general that we have our house in order. So thank you for, for your patience in advance. Yes, sir. It costs you nothing. They can do it next Sunday. Yes, we have through the month of April. We'll, we'll be hanging out in the, in the sanctuary to ensure that everybody has the opportunity to meet with us and update your information.
No, but he's going to get a lanyard and he's going to help us. With the, the three or four systems we've been using right now, you know, there's, there's chaos involved with that. And how many know if the Lord increases your numbers, you just increased your chaos. But with this, it reduces every, all of it. Amen? Amen. Praise the worship team. Come give her a hand clap for her and her team. Love Lisa Carol. How many are ready to worship God? Also, I know that Pastor Deborah, she got some goes on the sandwich boards. It's going to be out there next Sunday. Is that right? Yeah, you guys will go out and you'll see the, the great big QR code, everything needs to happen, a picture of, of church center, everything on the, we're retiring our, our COVID boards. And we're, we're changing them into this. So stand to your feet if you would. Go ahead, Sasha, you ready? We're going to jump in. I just encourage you to keep your hearts open. God's moving. And I just want to be a part. We want to be a part of whatever he's doing. So let's do it. The greatest day in history. Death is beating, you have rescued me. Sing it out, Jesus is alive. The empty cross, the empty grave. Life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. He's alive and oh, happy day. Happy day, you wash my sin away, oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same, oh, forever I've changed, oh, when I stand, when I stand in that place, Realize, meeting face to face, I am yours, Jesus, you are mine. Endless joy, perfect peace, earthly pain finally will see. Celebrate, Jesus is alive, he's alive, and oh, happy day. Day. You wash my sin away, oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same, oh, happy day, happy day, you wash my sin away, oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same. Forever I'm changed And oh, what a glorious day What a glorious way That you have saved me And oh, what a glorious day What a glorious day Thank you have saved me. 
day, happy day. You wash my sin away. Oh, happy day, happy day. I'll never be the same. Oh, happy day, happy day. You wash my sin away. Oh, happy day, happy day. I'll never be the same.
praise and all of the honor you are our God the 
Sing it to him. Sing it to him. Creator, are you Lord? Great are you, Lord. Sing it again. Worship me, Jesus. You are the Lord. Great are you, Lord. Lord we lift our hands to you this morning. Worship you. Creator, the Lord. are you, Lord? So grateful, God, for what you're doing in our lives and our families. Lord, we don't have to stay in darkness. We don't have to be in darkness. We don't have to be dominated by darkness. We can walk in the light. Worship you for that this morning. Things can be clear. Things don't have to be opaque and and can't see through and can be clear. Speak that over the church, Lord God. Not only just our church, but the church worldwide. You know, I saw something this morning, and I don't know how many have ever done this. Me and my brother, you know, he was, my brother Bruce is one year older than me, and we were getting ready to head to, we were in high school, getting ready to head to school one day, and we were running late, and our his windshield had frozen over. So us being the geniuses that we were, we both made a hole about this big on both sides. You know what I'm talking about? And then he goes down our bumpy driveway and we head out and all of a sudden, you guys know how it is, the window's cold and you turn on the de defroster and it's not ready yet and it fogs up what little hole you have. How many of you have ever been there? Am I the only one? Oh yeah, in a hurry. I'll never forget this. And my brother's looking at me and I, it's really cold outside and I roll down the window to stick my head out because he can't see it, he's driving. <laughs> he says, how we doing? No, I'm on the passenger side. I said this. I, I think we're doing okay. We're coming up on a corner. I think we're doing okay. And then all of a sudden we feel this. And we end up like this in the ditch. Blew out his front tire. And I saw that this morning. And, and how that pertains to this morning is this. There, there's, a, there's a lot here. And those that have been watching. You know, the, the enemy has kind of come and just kind of frozen over your vision. And the Lord said, he's not expecting you to get out and scrape off anything. But he is expecting you to turn the heater on. And he is expecting you to let the heater run. Because he says, what's going to happen is not like me and my brother. You can't be in a hurry. You have to just let it work. Right? Say, well, Pastor, how, how, do, I, how do I 
turn the heater on? How do I start it up and turn the heater on? The Lord says, draw nigh unto God, and he'll draw near unto you. I don't care where you are watching or in here. Just draw near with your heart. Even if you don't know how to say, even if you don't know what to say, even if you say this, Lord, we haven't been on speaking terms for a long time, but I just want to start my engine and turn on my heater right now. And I want you to clear my vision. What in the world am I supposed to be doing? Where am I supposed to be involved? What am I supposed to be involved with? And just let him work. And he, you, you'll see. First, the ice will start to melt on the outside, and then the fog will start to clear on the inside. And you'll know. You'll know. And the Lord said he's doing this worldwide right now. But there's a verse that says you have not because what? You ask not. So no matter where you are, and you, you may have been driving your whole life looking through a hole this big, right? And the Lord wants to clear your whole windshield. Otherwise, your life is purposeful. There's things he wants you to see incredibly clear, not just in front of you, but to the side of you, all around you. He, he even has the little things in the back window. You look up in the mirror, you can see behind you. He wants you to have a vision of everything. So let's just do this. Everybody just close your eyes. Say, Father, right now, I start my engine. I turn on my heater. I turn on my defrost. I ask you right now to thaw out my vision and to bring clarity, God. Clear the window of my vision, God. I want to do exactly what you want me to do. I don't want to kind of finish. I want the perfect will of God. So do that for me. In Jesus' name. Now let's lift your hands and say, I receive. Lord, I receive right now. I receive right now. Lord, you're so good. It doesn't matter where people have been. It doesn't matter. Lord, if they'll draw nigh right now, doesn't matter how long you've been out of fellowship with God. doesn't matter if you've ever been in fellowship. If you'll reach out right now and say, God, I start my engine, I turn on my heater, and I want you to change things in my life, God will do it. Worship you, Lord. Clarity, Lord. Clarity, clarity, clarity for your people in this hour and in this time. Have you got anything? Everyone say this before we kind of shift gears here. Say, I have eyes that see. I have ears that hear. I have a heart that understands what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. And I thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, praise and worship team. You guys may be seated. You know, it was so funny to see that this morning because, you, you know, maybe some of you don't know, but my, my brother went home to be with the Lord this year, in January, and he was my closest brother. We're 14 months apart. It was, it was a difficult situation, but I know where he is. And so I, I hadn't thought about that story since he, he had gone, but I, how many know that the relationship, relationship is such a real thing? That he actually could be thinking of that in heaven as I'm thinking of that here. And he will we'll laugh about that in the future. But how many, again, how many ever had a story kind of like that in your life? Anybody? Yeah, Dave? Yeah, oh yeah. In a hurry. Usually when the I'm in a hurry, usually it doesn't work out very good with a frozen window. Man, if you got your Bibles this morning, I want you to open them up if you would. Somewhere. Now to First Corinthians chapter thirteen. Yeah, this morning I forgot to run all my notes off, but I got them on my phone, so I bought my glasses up here just in case I need them. <coughs> I tried to print here, but pr printed a bunch of uh, blank pages. I'm like, hey, what's up with you? Let me get where I need to go here. 1 Corinthians 13, 11. 
is what we've been talking about. So when I was a child, I spoke and I thought and I reasoned as a what? Child. When I grew up, I, be, I put away childish ways. Now we see things imperfectly like puzzling reflections in a mirror. But then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete. But then I will know everything completely, just as God now knows me completely. Three things will what? That's what we've been talking about. We've been talking about three things that last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is what? Love. And you guys know I blame this on Karen Hausman. She's the one that began to deal with me on this. And I just, because sometimes myself, Pastor Kelly, our staff will, will just think, well, you know, may, I think they know that, whatever that is. And a lot of times it's, it's not. You, it's not, you don't know how it fits. You don't know how God has done that in his word. And it just needs to be really clear. Everybody say clear. So really, I've been talking about walking in that which lasts forever, strengthening that which, which lasts forever. And we talked about hope. The Bible says God is the God of all hope. Have you seen anyone in the last couple of years lose hope? Well, I have too. It's, it's ugly. It's, it's difficult. They, otherwise, they see Put it this way, if you have hope, it's tough for you to commit suicide if you have hope. When people get to the place where there is no hope or things seem hopeless, that's where they begin to just ponder that. And the enemy constantly leads people there from a hopeless place. Also, it says that hope comes out of the scripture. It comes out of the scripture. Then we learn this. It says, faith is the standing by or the substance of what you hope for. Otherwise, you can't have faith if you don't have hope. But there is a, there's a faith-hope connection. And I said this, it, it's, it's like a, hope is like the blueprint, and faith is like that which you build. It's built in your life by faith. And hope is not faith, and faith is not hope, but they sure do work together. Now, what I want to talk to you about today is love. Everybody say love. Now, one of the things about love, I don't care how much faith you have, I don't care how much hope you have, if you don't get good at walking in love, you're kind of wasting your time. So look at, uh, I want you to go back to 1 Corinthians 13 again, but I'm going to go all the way back to verse 1. Because we've been reading, you know, down the last half of this verse, right? But look at. Go ahead. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 says, If I speak with the tongues of man and of what? And angels, and I have not love for others growing out of God's love for me, then I become only a what? A noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Just a what? <laughs> Who wants to be that? Nobody wants to be an annoying distraction, right? But here, you know, this is one of the things we emphasize in this church. It's very, very important. Having a prayer language, praying in tongues, very important. I, I can't teach on that uh, now. But I mean, this is so, so important. But he said, listen, if you're doing that and it's not connected to love, you, you're, you're just, well, how do I put it? Annoying distraction. Look at the next verse. And if I have the gift of what? Now, let me tell you, there's a lot of prophets and the gift of prophecy functioning in the body of Christ right now, and it's wonderful. But you understand that uh, a lot of times human beings are wowed by the supernatural. And you know what? You can operate in the supernatural and still not be walking in the love of God. This is where confusion comes into the body of Christ. Because the gifts of God are without repentance, and all it takes to walk in the gifts of the Holy Spirit is faith. So babies can walk in it. But, you know, eventually they'll grieve the Holy Spirit if they don't get into love. It says, if I have the gift of prophecy, speak in a new message from God to the people. And I understand what? How many mysteries, Karen? All mysteries. I understand all. This is a pretty impressive list here. I understand all mysteries, right? And I possess all what? Wow. Wow. And if I have all sufficient faith so that I can what? Wow. But listen, but I do not have love reaching out to others. I'm what? 
Wait a minute, wait a minute. Because, you know, faith that moves mountains is pretty impressive. It is. All knowledge, all mysteries, these are really impressive things. But do you understand that the reason Paul is giving this is because spiritual gifts have the opportunity to puff you up. And boy, I have seen it over the years. I mean, guys will start operating in faith that moves mountains. They'll have all knowledge. They'll have prophecy. They'll have power flowing out of their life. And they forget that, you know what? It's not about you, and it's not your power. It's God. It's Him. It's to magnify Jesus. Otherwise, the, the fleshly fame fits nowhere in the church. Nowhere. Fame is so overrated. You ever notice that a lot of people from Hollywood want to be famous until they're famous? They're like these paparazzi, you're looking over my fence. Fame, fame. Didn't, you wanted this, right? Then they're like, I can't even go get coffee without somebody. I, fame. Totally overrated. Right? And what the, we should spend time trying to be invisible. See what I'm saying? Functioning in the, in the call of God. Functioning what he called you to do. You know, one of the best examples of this, and uh, many in here know uh, him, is, is Kenneth Hagin. Brother Hagin. He was the best example of this. He, he, would, he would spend time trying not to be visible, but to be invisible. In fact, when the Lord kind of took him into the first phase of his ministry and told him where he was going to be going, he pastored for about 12 years. And, and, and the Lord just really began to lay out, this is what you're actually called to do and be. He's like, Lord, please, do I have to? I mean, it's pretty impressive stuff. He said, Lord, can I just like pastor a church of 200, 250 my whole life? I'd rather just do that. And the Lord's like, no, it's not what I called you to do. Matter of fact, I never called you to pastor at all after he pastored for 12 years. He said, but you had to, to get here where you are. But I never called you to do this. I called you to be a prophet. He's like, oh, Lord, that's really messy. Because that puts me in a bucket with a lot of guys I don't want to be in the same bucket with. But said, he had this, and I'd see him give words to people, very specific words. And he'd say to them, does that bear witness with your heart? And they'd usually, eyes this big, yeah, that bears witness with my heart. He said, oh, good. He said, if it does, take it. If it doesn't, just throw it away. I'm a man. I could miss it. And I never saw him miss it. Did you ever see him miss it? I never did either. <laughs> but the thing is, he's, what he's doing is he's detaching you from his gift and connecting you to the living God. That you need to judge that in your own heart. Don't do it just because the prophet spoke it to you. Judge that in your own heart. One time they introduced him and they, you know, understand, especially the younger you are in the ministry, you, you get infatuated with people. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great privilege tonight. We have the prophet of God. And he just goes on and on and on and on and on. And finally, Brother Hagin gets up there and he goes, well, one thing he said was true. I am a man. Now, open your Bibles. He just de-escalated everything. What's he doing? He's trying to bring it into a normal, normal place. So, you know what? I'm just like you. I put my pants on one leg at a time, just like you. If it wasn't for the anointing on my life, doing what I'm doing right now, I couldn't do it. See, but all these things are wonderful things. He says, but if I do these things and I don't have love, I'm what? Nothing. I'm nothing. Thank God for faith that will move mountains. Thank God for great hope. These three things remain. It says, but the greatest of these is love. Look at this. Go to the next verse that I have for you there. Sorry, guys. I'm going to be messing with this a little bit today. There we go. Now go to 1 Corinthians 13, 4. We're going to start there. Here, this is what I'm getting ready to give you. This is God's definition of what love looks like and acts like. This is, everybody say God's. God. See, God, this is, this is the way God himself acts. Remember it says God is, no, God doesn't have love. He is love. Here's how God acts. Love, well, you can put God in there, but love endures with what? Patience and serenity. Love is kind and what? Thoughtful. And is not jealous or what? Wow. Love does not brag and is not proud or arrogant. It's not rude. It's not self-seeking. It's not provoked. Nor overly sensitive. 
and easily angered. You ever been there? Overly sensitive and easily angered. You know, I have my hand up. That's, that's, that's just seeing who else. Well, you know, hey, how dare he or she or her or whoever say, how dare them say that to me? Come on. You know, and if you really melt it down, you probably, they probably were help, trying to help you. But a lot of times, how many know what I'm talking about? You get to that place where you just kind of get this prideful, stiff neck thing going on. That's not the love of God. It does not take into account a what? Is there anybody in the planet that's taking into account the, the wrong that they have endured? Listen, if anybody has a right to do that, it's God. The rebellion that's happened over the millennia with created things that he has made, right? And pe people that say things to me like, man, let me tell you, I got a lot of things to say to God when I get to heaven. You don't know God. God is love. You're being deceived and you're being lied to. And when you get there, all that is going to vanish away and you have understanding and you'll go, oh, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, you didn't. Because God's love. Absolute love. Next verse. It said, it does not rejoice at injustice, but rejoices with the truth when right and truth prevail. Love bears all things regardless of what comes. It believes all things looking for the best in what? In each one. Hopes all things, remaining steadfast during difficult times, endures all things without weakening. And love never what? Never fails. Love never fails. See, you get into this area of, of faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. The other two things I've taught on, hope and faith, if we don't do it God's way, it's just an annoyance, and it's nothing. Measured with what? Eternal measurement. I don't know about you, but I don't want to live my life and find out that I did it for nothing. See, the love of God is so powerful. It is the big deal. Let me say the big deal. Love is the big deal, but it's keeping the big deal the big deal. Turn to Galatians 5, 6. I'm going to read out of the AMPC. AMP Classic. See, love is the kingdom power source. Otherwise, faith and hope, everything's got to be plugged into love. If it doesn't, Again, it's not running right. Or it's a short-circuited faith. I've seen that too, and I've lived in it. Short-circuited faith. And you, you're trying to do something, but yet you're, you're, you're walking over everybody to do it. Because you want to be God's man or woman of faith and power. And that's not how it works, right? Look at this verse here. For if we are in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircum or uncircumcision counts for anything. He's talking about the law. But here's what counts. Only faith activated and energized and expressed and working through what? Love. See, it's a power source. Love is the kingdom power source. God wants us to walk in faith. He wants us to walk in all these things. The, the greatest example of this is Jesus himself. You remember when Peter pulled out his sword in the garden? And whacked off the high priest servants here. Remember that? And Jesus turned to him and says, well, you know, what are you doing here? And one, one of the gospels, you know, he actually goes and puts the ear back on. I thought that was, now, I think his name was Malchus. The guy had his ear whacked off. Could you imagine being Malchus? You're there to arrest him. And then, ah! You know, all, all swords are out. And the guy puts your ear back on. He's like, I'm done. <laughs> Any man puts my ear back on, I am not going to arrest him. <laughs> because Jesus, here he is in the garden. All the things that he went through. He did it for me and you. He, he didn't do it for any other reason. Matter of fact, on Wednesday nights, I'm talking about the restoration of all things. I'm doing the last one on Wednesday night, I think. And you guys need to come. The reason is, man, the things that he did, it's mind-boggling. That's why Christianity is really not a world religion. It's not. It is the answer for the world, but I wouldn't package it in the package of religion with everything else and put it on the religious shelf. It doesn't work that way. You're talking about a God who is love and loves you. 
and actually came and fixed the problem. And I've been talking about how he did it. All right? Let me show you another one. I turn to 1 John chapter 4. See, walking in love and help you know God. Help you know God. You know, you, you ever notice that uh, the last letters of John were just full of love? He's like, love, 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 love one another, love God, love, love, love. Well, he got to the place where here he is probably in his 90s, history says. He's probably somewhere in his 90s, and he gets it. He gets it. Matter of fact, even when he wrote the book of John, remember what he called himself? The disciple that Jesus loves. He absolutely was convinced that God loves him. And you know what? When you're convinced God loves you, it helps you love other people. Look at this verse. Beloved, he writes, let us unselfishly love and seek the best for one another. Love is from what? God. Everyone who loves others is born of God and knows God through personal experience. Tough words, he says, the one who does not love has not become acquainted with God. Wow. Pastor, is he saying I'm not? I'm not saved. No, it didn't say you weren't saved. It said you just don't know God. You've asked. You, see, Jesus could be your Savior. In a certain amount, in some things, he could be your Lord. But you still don't understand he's love. Does not and never did know him. For God is love. He is the originator of love. And it is an enduring attribute of his nature. By this, the love of God was displayed in us, in that God sent his one and only begotten son, the one who is truly unique, the only one of his kind into the world so that, he might so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation or the, the atoning sacrifice. That is the atoning sacrifice and the satisfying offering for our sins, fulfilling God's requirement for justice against sin and place and uh, placating his wrath. Beloved, if God so loved us in this incredible way, we also ought to what? Love one another. See, we, we want to operate in faith. We want to operate in hope. We want to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. We want to walk in all those things that the Word of God says are ours, inheritances, blessings. But also, I want to, I want to have it in my life measured in such a way that it's the, it's the same way and it has the same value that God says it has in my life. Because if I live my life just like it says in those first few chapters, man, look at me. I can prophesy. You want to hear me speak in tongues? I can speak in tongues. Two other things it says this. It says, I, I, I give all that I am, everything I own, I give away to the poor. Those are all wonderful things. Matter of fact, I, I'm a martyr for Jesus. And I give everything I am, even my own life for God. It says, but if you have love, you're nothing. This is the power source for everything. Learning to love people. How many have ever met someone who's, you need to love them, but yet you look and you know by looking and you know you and you know them that they're, they're, it's, that's impossible. They're, they're unlovable. <laughs> this is why you need faith. This is why you need God. Because you could still love them, but it's going to be by faith. Taking steps and saying, God, mm. my outside man right now says, run. But my inside man says, you need to love them. You need to love them. You need to pray for them. You know, there's a story one time. Like I say, Brother Hagin, for years he had pastored. And then he actually went out on the road, ended up on the radio. And, and he was doing a lot of teaching and different things. And he was actually, he had partners in different places, right? And he, he, he was big on this. Let's say he was on the radio and he was saying, to, he'd say to the people, listen, if you want to support this ministry, God bless you. But this is not your tithe. So your tithe belongs in your local church. He said, so if you're, if you're going to send me your tithe, don't send your tithe here. That goes in your local church. If you want to send an offering for here to help us do what God called us to do, that's fine. You know, well, he was out just, 
you know, in the area he's traveling. And so some of the people he knew, evidently he was in contact with them and said, hey, you know, stop by. I have an offering for you, Brother Hagin, in, in, if you're in the area. So he stopped by and was fellowshipping and all. Well, the pastor that took over the church that he was a pastor at for years found out he was in the area. And, you know, like anybody else, pastors like anybody else, this thought starts come, coming into his head. You know what? He's out there taking your money. So all of a sudden, I mean, this pastor just grabbed Brother Hagin by the, by the neck. And Brother Hagin said, everything rose up in me. I, I wanted to punch him right in the head. <laughs> but he said, all of a sudden, it flashes in my mind on the front page the next day. And he just, he said that I began to say to him, brother, brother, no, you, you, this is a misunderstanding. And he says, the love of God came on me and I began to cry. He says, brother. Listen, you don't understand what's going on here. I would never take from you. I would never do that, ever. And when the love of God started coming out of him, it got on the guy that had hold of him. And all of a sudden, it turned into a wonderful love weeping fest. Forgiveness going on. But somebody has to take the step into the love of God. Otherwise, I'm Christian or not, it can escalate into blows. And unfortunately, into death if it goes far enough. <laughs> There was another one, uh, a guy on the, uh, was on the radio about the same time Brother Hagin was, and he was just making fun of Brother Hagin because he was on next after him. And, you know, the thoughts coming into his mind that, hey, that's just not right. He said, but here's what I did. I took up an offering for him, sent it to him. I said, brother, be blessed. Can you see that's the love of God? That's the love of God. <clears throat> I had a situation years ago in a really good friend swipe they're actually part of our staff here years ago and uh they got upset about something and and they just i mean we didn't know they were going we didn't know they just left and man i me and my wife were like you know what what's going on trying to call them no answer wow what's going on tried and tried and tried no answer no 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 contact none Wow. Wow. So we just had to kind of let it go. Right? What do you do? <clears throat> Try it, even going through other people. What what you know them? What, what's going on? Oh, I remember somebody walked into my office one time and they had this brand new watch and they said, "The Lord told me to give this to you, pastor." Open up the box. It's super expensive watch. Really nice watch. I thanked them, you know, they walked out. I said, "Lord, I'm not a watch guy." I mean, I got like one watch I wear. I'll wear it. I, some of you may be. I wear that thing till it dies. I, you know, I just don't have a collection like that. I just, I, my friends that do, don't, if that's you, no, no condemnation. But I, I, that's just not me. That's not me. And so I just felt like the Lord just said, you know, put it in your drawer. So I put it in my drawer. Two years go by. And that very guy that left the church called. And usually somebody else would answer the phone. But I answered the phone. And he says, hey, pastor, this is so-and-so. I said, hey, man, how you doing? Not good. Not good. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, his birthday was coming up. And, and I didn't know it was his birthday at the time. But I packed that watch up. The Lord said, send him that watch. So this is two years before, send him that watch. Then I get this call. He said, things aren't good. I he said, my wife kind of put her hand in the middle of my chest yesterday and said, I'm done with you. She left. <sighs> he said, and I called a friend of mine. It's a pastor down in Northern California. He said, what am I going to do? He said, first thing you need to do is call Pastor Brian and repent. <laughs> I don't even really, I know who this guy is, but I don't know him that well. That's what made him call. You know, the love of God came on me. And the greatest thing I feeling that I had on me as I said, man, you know what's so, so exciting today? I said to him, I just got my friend back. Just got my friend back. See, because the enemy will do all kinds of stuff to try to divide you from other people. You can't let him do it. You can't let him divide your family. You can't let him divide anybody. If you've got to humble yourself and you've got to be the one that really approached them and said, what have I done to offend you? Whatever you got to do, keep the love of God alive. There's too much offense going on all over the world right now. 
I guarantee you, you could trace every war back to some offense somewhere. 500 years ago. <laughs> and we've never forgot it. Well, you need to. You see what I'm saying? See, the love of God, it doesn't consider that. But yet, if abuse has gone on, some people have been horribly abused. That, what I'm not saying is it's right. I'm saying you have to use faith to forgive them. And sometimes it sounds like this. I forgive them in Jesus' name. Been there. Had to do that. <laughs> I got to the place where I said, Lord, I'm doing my best here. I sure could use a little help. And I was cresting a bridge from Kansas into Missouri. As soon as I crested that bridge, power of God hit me, and bam, all that left me. Never been back. But you see, I was still pushing, though. No, this is what the Word of God says. The Word, Word of God says, forgive them as I forgave you in Christ Jesus. Oh, that's unconditional. Can you see? This is how everything works by love. Faith, hope, the gifts, everything. The Spirit of God. He is love. Jesus is love. The Father is love. Pull up that last verse, will you, Jose, in the book of Matthew. Look, look what Jesus, how many know they were always trying to trap Jesus? Always trying to trap Jesus. It, I, I, man, the Lord could clear a room. He could do all kinds of stuff with like one sentence. And you know, you could too, as you just follow the Spirit of God. Follow Him. He'll show you what to say. Because Jesus is walking in love. When the Pharisees heard how He'd bested the Sadducees, you know what that means? You bested them. Now, now understand, the Lord's motive wasn't, <laughs> yeah, gotcha. He's not like that. He just said a few things and just disarmed everything. And the Pharisees thought, wow, that's good. Well, no, it's not. I mean, he, he's love. So here's what they did. They gathered their forces for what? <laughs> An assault. One of their religions, uh, religion scholars spoke for them, posing a question. That they hoped would show him up. Speaking about Jesus. Teacher, which command in God's law is what? That's actually a really good question. Because they're trying to trap him, trap him, trap him, trap him. Right? Look what he says. Jesus said, didn't even blink. Here it is. Bam. Love the Lord your God with all your passion and your prayer and your intelligence. This is the most important. The first on any list. But there's a what? A second to set alongside it. Love others as well as you what? Now listen to this last statement. It said these two commands are pegs. Bam. You know pegs in the wall? Everything in God's law and the prophets hangs on them. Wow. Everything in the law of the prophets you'll fulfill if you love God and you love others. And your faith will work. And your hope will work. And you, you, you'll you walk into the gifts of the Spirit. You know, Kelly and I were out of town and uh, visiting. You know, a lot of you know David and Bridget Winry. We were in Coos Bay. We visited them and, and you know, Michelle and just the, Bill and Cheryl. Some of the, that's what we did the last couple days of spring break. We came back yesterday. <clears throat> But I was just up in the morning, one morning, just spending time with God. And I pulled up to, to make my run for the girls to Dutch Bros. They like Dutch Bros. So I'm sitting in the car, and there's a car ahead of me. And I'm looking in my rearview mirror, and these two young guys, they're walking. They're going to walk through, right? And I'm, I'm looking at them, and I just had that, that love of God come, that sense of love. And the Lord said, why don't you just buy theirs too? I said, okay. So I get up there, and I ordered ours and she said is there anything else I said, yes there is and i opened my door and i turned around and i says i'm gonna buy these guys and they got ours well you're the only guys walking what do you think and i love what one guy did he says would you buy one for my mom too <laughs> i like boldness amen i said yes <laughs> now orders are in it gives me an opportunity to talk to these guys they're both junior high guys middle school middle school guys 14 years old I said to him, you know, say, you know, conversation, you guys brothers, you know, just talking. I said, you know, I don't know if you guys believe in this, but I'm looking at you in my rearview mirror. You know what? 
Jesus said to buy your drinks today. So you could never say Jesus never did anything for you. And I just had this conversation, just breathing on them. What is it? That's the love of God. That's the love of God. And I told him, I said, I'm glad you ordered for your mama. Because if you would have went back and you had two drinks and you didn't bring one for your mama, that's not smart. He goes, oh, no. no. <laughs> I said, but when you go back, would you tell your mama that Jesus bought your drinks for you? See, what if we as believers just stayed hooked up and did that kind of stuff everywhere? Well, this is one of the reasons, and I talked a little bit about an offering. This is one of the reasons why we just need to be blessed. What if God put you in a place you can do that all day if he wanted you to? See, he wants that. But those two boys are both from, from Klamath Falls. They'll never forget that their whole life, ever. I mean, how often does that happen? But yet the love of God, when the love of God comes. Now, that's the first time I've ever done that like that. So it's not like, oh, man, I'm going to do that every time. No, I'm not. I'm going to do that when the unction's there and the love of God is there and God is doing something. See, but walking in the love of God in any area of your life is so important. That, that one person maybe in your family or where you work that's constantly just a struggle. Man, take that one on as an assignment. Okay, God. Okay, I'm going to teach him the love of God. Yeah. You know, we all hear this verse. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. And we talk about the gift inside a lot. But, you know, sometimes I just talk about a gift. Ask the Lord for that person. Lord, what do they really like? And then go buy it for them. And say, you know, I asked somebody a question. And they told me, this is what you like. Well, who'd you ask? Jesus. And he told me to get this for you. Really? Why would he do that? Because he loves you. And you know what I do too? You do? Why would you do that? You know what I mean? Because <laughs> people know when they're unlovable. See, but the love of God is what causes everything to work. Everything to work. Brother Hagin used to say this. And the first time I heard it was difficult for me. He said, a step out of love is a step into darkness. I thought, ooh, note to self. I want to walk in love. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we thank you this morning. You're so good to us. Lord, you said these three remain eternally. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Teach us. Teach us. God, you are love. Your kingdom's love. Your word is love. Your spirit's love. Your whole assignment is love. Help us to walk with our faith plugged into the power source of love. And Lord, it's, it's dominating. It cannot be stopped when it's plugged into love. It can't. It's like a steamroller in the spirit that crushes darkness. Because love is powerful. You know, with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're in here, and even that first word I gave, if, if you've been away from the Lord, let's just start there. If you've been away from the Lord, and you just haven't been serving God, and you kind of been, you know, just driving around with your window froze off. And today you said, Lord, I'm going to start my engine, I'm going to turn on my heater. I'm going to let it start blowing again. I'm going to let it start clearing vision again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to you, Jesus. If that's you in the room or if that's you watching, with every head bowed, every eye closed, would you just raise your hand? Say, that's me. I want to pray today. Right there, I see that hand. Anyone else? Anyone else? That's me. I want to pray that. I want to make sure. Okay. Second thing is this. If you're here and you've never given your heart to Jesus, you've never surrendered your heart to Jesus. You, you've kind of done things your whole way your whole life, but the love of God is in this room right now. And this is him personified. He just, he loves you so much that you can't even, you can't even know yourself without knowing him. He'll introduce you to yourself. If you've never surrendered your life to Jesus and ask him to come into your heart and to be the Lord of your life and savior of your life, whether you're in this room or if you're watching right now, if you've never done that, would you raise up your hand? Anyone like that? Look across both sides. Just want to make sure. First, I'm going to pray a prayer. 
with that one that raised their hand and you may be watching on line right now saying man pastor that's me i i allowed myself to be deceived in darkness and i just been living my life for me and haven't been thinking about other people and really i just i, I want to start my engine back up today i want to turn the heater on and i just want want the windshield of my the vision of my life just to just to clear we're going to have everyone pray this prayer simple prayer short prayer I have not pray it. Everyone say, Father, thank you that Jesus is in my heart. Lord, forgive me for walking away into darkness. Right now, Lord, I start my engine. I turn on my heater. And I say, Jesus, forgive my sin. Help me become exactly what you want me to be. Lord, I embrace your ways, your word, and your spirit afresh and anew today. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Now, if you've never received Christ, I want you to pray this after me. You guys pray it with me. Say, Father, I thank you. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe. You sent him to earth for me. That he hung on a cross. He became sin with my sin. And he hung there and he died. And he descended into darkness. And he paid my debt in full. Then he rose from the dead to give me life. Jesus, forgive my sin. Come into my heart and make me brand new. I receive right now the life of God. And I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. And I thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody look up here. Listen, if you prayed that, maybe you didn't raise your hand, but you prayed that. Uh, Pastor Tim, stand up. Pastor Tim's our discipleship pastor. And even you that are online, matter of fact, come over here, Tim, so they can see you a little bit. If they're online. This is the guy you're going to be dealing with, guys. But we want to be able to help you on this journey. You, just, you received Christ. You stepped into the biggest kingdom in all of time, full of love, full of light, full of life. But yet you have to learn how to walk in it. It's called discipleship. And that's what we want to help you do. So see Pastor Tim on that. Amen. And the one that raised their hand, see Pastor Tim on that too. You see Pastor Tim? Good deal. Good deal. Isn't God good? Aren't you glad the love of God is available? Guys, one last story. <clears throat> you know, it says the love of God in Romans 5 says the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. Again, there was a minister ministering one time and he went out to lunch with the pastor and his wife. Pastor's wife, she's sitting at the table and the pastor preached a message like this on the love of God. And she says, uh, Preacher, I, I, I think I got a problem. He said, what's the problem? <sighs> I hate my mother-in-law. He said, well, that, that is a problem. And this is, a, this is a pastor's wife. I hate my mother-in-law. And he said, well, and he, you know, they got their food. He's, and this preacher's eating. He says, well, then you don't have the love, of, love nor the life of God in you. And he just left it with her, right? And she's sitting there going, what? And then finally looked up and says, you don't hate your mother-in-law. She goes, oh, yes, I do. <laughs> I said, no, you don't. Oh, yes, I do. I said, no, you don't. You look at me. I said, put down your fork. You look right here in my eyes. You tell me, you look right in my eyes. You tell me from your heart that you hate your mother-in-law. And she puts it down and goes, I hate my mother-in-law. And all of a sudden she goes, oh. He said, what? Something scratching right in here. Something's wrong. He says, you know what that is? That's the love of God. It's been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit when you get born again. You need to get it out here. He says, what you need to do is in faith, you need to deal with your mother-in-law. And the next time he saw her, he said, well, thank you so much for sharing that. I went ahead and made a great big lunch and had her and, and my, my sister-in-laws come over. What a wonderful bunch of ladies. See, the enemy had separated that family. 
And something happened, something was said, something was done, and he just lodged that inside of her. But the love of God's always been in there for her. But sometimes in faith, you just have to say, you know what, Lord, the love of God is shed abroad in my heart for that person, but it may be way down in the depths of my heart, way down there. It's way down there. I, I need to grudge that up. But it's in there. God wants us all to experience that. Amen. So if while I was speaking, you had a person come to mind, you just got your assignment for the week. Woo! <laughs> Amen. Hey, just a reminder, tonight, 5 o'clock, we're going to be over at Hosanna. We're going to be doing We Will Worship. In the bulletin is the, you can plug the address in. Head over there, going to have a time of worship, just time of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Anything else, babe? Stand to your feet. Love you guys. Be blessed. Mm -hmm.